Live from Chicago, Illinois, the home of Peter Francis Geraci and John Wayne Gacy, it's the Pandemic Talk Show, featuring T.J. Shanoff and the State Home Orchestra. Today's guests, from Strangers with Candy, Greg Holliman, and from the Second City and TikTok, Seth Thomas. Now for your host, Justin Kaufman. Hey, how about it? everybody, Justin Kaufman here. It's the Pandemic Talk Show. We are live, 4 o'clock uh, Central Time, for all you people watching out the East Coast, the West Coast, or somewhere. I was going to say, that's a pretty much the extent of my time zone knowledge. <laughs> East Coast, West Coast, Mountain Time. I'm sure there's others, but <laughs> that's about it. Uh, great show lined up today. Good to see you guys. Oh, my God, Goldie, we can see you. What happened to your beard? What's uh, going on? I... Have you ever heard of quarantidium? <laughs> Hit me and I started to grow a handlebar mustache. I shaved down a handlebar and my wife screamed when she saw me. So I shaved yeah. it all off. And now that I'm, I'm slowly growing it back. Yeah. Um, When's the last time you did not have a beard? Uh, that would be April of 2013 at the <laughs> beginning of the Blackhawks cup run that year. That's good. I, I love that every, every man who's got a beard can remember exactly when it started. And Goldie oh, can yeah. remember exactly when it started. April 2013. Yeah, it's the right? Blackhawks. The Blackhawks are Movember are the only times I have facial hair. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Man. Happy 421. <laughs> yeah, it was your birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, I'm, TJ. I'm always high yeah, a day late. Busy, Thank you, guys. <laughs> so yeah, good to I, be back. How does it feel? I mean, it looks good. I mean, the uh, the bathroom recording studio still holding up? Or, or is your family angry because they got to go? No, it's actually, they love it. The people who live here are getting furious with me, but everybody else is really everybody happy. Else. There's no social distancing when it comes to the recording studio in the bathroom, right? Not nah, dude, Liberty. Don't Liberty. tell me what to do. Is this that show? <laughs> oh, we'll talk later. We'll talk later. All right, well, we got a great show lined up. Greg Holloman is here. Greg, it's just funny to think about the guests we have on the show who, you know, we love to do this. It's so wild to do this because we get a chance to catch up with a lot of friends that we never catch up with anyway. <laughs> See that we were friends with Greg and, and Seth Thomas as well. And uh, I would say that before the virus, we would hang out all the time, but we didn't. So it's good to actually have a chance to catch up and I, find. I love those guys and the two gigs I did with them in the late nineties. I had right. great people. <laughs> well, good Greg decade. Holloman, of course, uh, the famed principal Blackman from Strangers with Candy, which yeah. is amazing to me that still holds up after 20 some odd years of one of the best pieces of television of all time. I just watched it the other day. And whether it's uh, Amy Sedaris or Stephen Colbert or Paul Danello, and of course, Greg Holloman, it is just top notch television. And uh, people have tried to parody the after school special many different ways, but that show still reigns supreme. So, Greg Holloman on the show today. And also, you may have seen the uh, TikTok dance that uh, Seth Thomas, my second guest tonight or today, uh, actually did where the flight attendants on an empty flight from LA to Oakland. It was on a Today Show. It was on Good Morning America. He's got it everywhere. But I have a ton of questions like, why are you on that flight to begin with? No one's asked him that question, right? <laughs> it's an easy drive. It's not that bad of a drive in a pandemic. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You get, you gotta get, get, you get in the gig. Like, what's going on? I got so many questions. I'll you're in the that. airport longer than you're on the plane. <laughs> I know, right? And he was the only one on that flight, which is hilarious. So we'll talk with uh, Seth Thomas coming up on the show. But before we do that, let's get to the monologue, shall we? Governor Pritzker may extend the stay-at-home order in some parts of the states and lift it for others. Yeah, that's kind of the rumor that's going around right now. Like, go by county by county. So you could be staying home in Cook County and spitting in each other's mouth and will. If you're in DuPage, you can do a little bit of both. It's like the middle sibling of Chicagoland counties, DuPage County. Shout out to DuPage. Yeah, that's all go. our viewership's DuPage County, Scott. Yeah, really Look is. out. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. If DuPage County had a name, I think it would be Kevin. It's DuPage like, County. Yeah. DuPage County. Do what you like. Do what you like. You know uh, how pretty much every small business in Illinois got shut out for the uh, government loans? Well, not Illinois Republican donor Ron Gidwitz. His company got $5 million. Gidwitz was the chairman of Trump's Illinois fundraising campaigns. Then he was named the ambassador to Belgium. And now he receives the golden ticket. Funny how that happens, huh? Look, folks, it's the American way. It's simple. 
You know that you know the old saying: be a billionaire, give millions to Trump, become ambassador to the fairy tale land of chocolate and beer, and pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Right? It's the American way. He's uh, he's also Illinois' version of the penguin, is what he looks like. <laughs> he really does, doesn't he? He ran for governor him. a couple of years ago, and yeah, I remember thinking that the same thing that he's yeah. got a very uh, DC villain uh, vibe going. Yeah. Speaking of the president, he continues to give rambling briefings every afternoon as he pushes to reopen the economy. Most people would rather hear from the experts rather than have the president do a campaign rally. Here's an idea. Reopen golf courses from 4 to 6 p.m. and bam, two birds, one stone. Huh? <laughs> he loves to lie, but he loves to golf even more. So that's <laughs> out. Trump continued to say that he's inherited a broken, depleted system, and he's the only one who can fix it. You know what? He's like the Jerry Krause of presidents. Yeah, he gets like a, he, he inherits a pretty good situation. Drafts Will Purdue, and then he won all the championships. Exactly. Guess, L- L- little <laughs> trivia, Trump is also BFFs with Tim Floyd. So there's, good. we're going to. Oh, we're going to keep going with this. And Trump, would be, Trump would totally be the guy getting berated by Scottie Pippen on the team bus. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, the Blues Fest was canceled today. What? Uh, oh. When Reach for Comment, the festival was like social distancing. The Blues has been social distancing for years. Hey! Yeah. That's the problem. I like the Blues. I'm a Blues guy. I'm sorry. I like the Blues. You know what? I feel bad for Jerry Krause. Okay, The Last Dance is fantastic television. Jerry Krause is dead. And there's literally no one to stand up for him. Everybody is just dumping on Jerry Krause. It feels like... Uh, Reinsdorf should, and he kind of goes, eh. Yeah, he, Reinsdorf is like, I'd be happy if I wasn't invited to a wedding. So I don't think he's standing up for anybody. Yeah, my favorite part about the uh, the whole last dance was just the idea of getting my family to watch it with me. I, I really spent, I really pushed the idea that this was groundbreaking television, that kind of thing. You know, it's not just a sports documentary about the Bulls. And my wife was like, yeah, I'll watch. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm in, the whole family's gonna watch this, right? And then she, when we started to get to it, she's like, wait, I thought you, I thought this was like a Julia Stiles dance movie. <laughs> she didn't know it was a documentary. <laughs> she didn't know that there'd be a series of F-bombs and stories about the traveling cocaine circus. Ah. Uh, Family viewing. That's good stuff. Awesome. And also, I love how uh, uh, Scotty Pippen looked like uh, he, we should have sympathy or empathy for him uh, because he didn't get paid enough and he was underappreciated, which is all true. But the one thing that the, I think that the documentarians forget, and I think many Chicagoans remember, is Scotty Pippen was a dick all the way through. <laughs> he was always being a dick. I love you, Scotty. Don't thing. listen to them. He, he did make Bill Cartwright cry in 94, right? He had Cartwright right. in tears. He also yeah. couldn't get off the bench in the 94 Eastern Conference Final. That's what I'm talking about. He drew the shot up for Ku Coach. And you know, he, it. he was right. the later. And I also remember I was watching something with Adley, the NBA All-Star game. I think it was maybe the 95 NBA All-Star game right before Jordan came back. And Pippen's being interviewed about wanting a trade. Like he's at the All-Star game and they're interviewing him and says, isn't this funny? He's like, so rumors about you in Chicago. He's like, well, I just don't think they, they appreciate me there. I'd love to go play for the Clippers. He said that. And I'm like, so there's people forget all the things. Every year he was doing that little dance. And people forget how bad the Clippers were back then. You, why don't you back off the Polish rifle? Anybody? Is that too Ron Jaworski? <laughs> Eric Piankowski. Oh, I might Ron, be making up names right now. Ron Jaworski with We've the Polish every- rifle. 81 Eagles. There you go. Uh, Jaws, all- Jaws started it, yes. Yeah, Jaws started it. All right, we got a great show. Before we get to the <laughs> guest, before Greg, who's, who's lined up and ready to rock, Let's get to TJ. TJ has been giving us the uh, COVID-19 business report. This is important because, you know, uh, you can't sign up for every single email from every single company to tell you how they're dealing with COVID-19. And so TJ has, and he has today's COVID-19 business report. TJ? I printed it out because the uh, my bank has not taken my printer away yet. So we're in good shape. We're good, I good. I got this email this morning, folks. During good times and bad, from Patriot's Day to Passover, you rely on Poppin' Fresh Pies to be Chicago's local fresh pie place for your local fresh pie face. At Poppin' Fresh, we believe in serious kick-ass pies as much as the safety of our customers and our dedicated team of Poppin' Pie Poppers. That's what Poppin' Fresh employees are called. Pop and pie poppers. <laughs> Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, the Pop and Fresh on Tui and Western was forced to shut down in 1993. 
Between coronavirus and Blues Traveler, we just couldn't take it anymore, okay? That's right. Privately, even John Popper's powerful participation couldn't prevent Pop and Fesh from pitifully pooping out. Peace, Popper. And stop playing your harmonica so damn loud. We get it. So from all of us at Pop and Fresh Pies, we'd like to say stay healthy. We're in this together. And suck at Baker Square. Back to you, Tony. Can I just, can I tell a John Popper story very quickly? Very quickly, yeah. I wasn't expecting to hear his name today, but John Popper and I, connect, we connected once. And he sent me an email. And at the end of it, he just wrote, I love text boobs. And then he <laughs> put a couple of text boobs and said, we're firing upon your position. And that was it. I, we never talked again. I have a John Popper story uh, as well. We were in, with Schadenfreude, I was in my comedy group, we were in LA and we were on tour and we had a bit in the show where one character hands another character a bag of shit, right? That's what it says. And it says on it, bag of shit. Like that's a joke in the show. And John Popper came, was right next to us as we were loading out our stuff. And he's like, oh, and that, and we're like, oh, hey, Blues Traveler, cool. And he's like, yeah, he's like, what you guys got in there? You got anything to eat or something like that? And we're like, we got a bag of shit. He's like, I'll take it. <laughs> and we gave him the prop, the bag of shit, and he walked away with it. So and it became their next album. <laughs> it really was. All right, our first, well, you know, before we get to our first guest, Goldie's got the read. Uh, we'll take this ad break, and then Greg Holl Holloman's up next. Are you wondering how to support unemployed service workers in these hard times? Go to chicagoservicerelief.com, a directory of fundraisers for Chicago bars, venues, restaurants, and other service-based businesses that can use our help during the state-mandated shutdown. And we'd like to help you out. If you have a nonprofit or a charity that is helping people in this time of need, please tweet at us, at Pandemic Show. I'm not going to spell it for you at Pandemic Show. Please tweet us your charitable organization, your nonprofit that is helping people now in this tough time. Back to you, Justin. Oh, we're back already, huh? I'm making it really, short. It's like a, a three-and-a-half minute read, Goldie. <laughs> I know. I'm trimming it, making it more efficient. Trim right. it! All right, first guest, uh, all the way from, he's actually in Florida, uh, an, an old Second City buddy of ours who also played Principal Blackman in Strangers with Candy. But ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Greg Holloman. Greg, welcome to the Pandemic Talk Show. Why don't I see me? Um... Get the video thing in the, uh, yeah, you got it? Got it, Greg? You gotta start your video. video. Like there he is. Hey, oh. there he is. Hey. Good to see you, buddy. Like a Burt Max, what's up? <laughs> How you been? Uh, I, I've been I've been good. You know, I'm here in uh, Punta Gorda, Florida. That's like uh, I've been down here uh, five years. So I've been actually I've been on quarantine for five years. <laughs> for five years. How is it in Florida with the, the stay at home rule and everyone hearing around the country that Florida is late to the game? Do you uh -oh. feel like uh, Florida? Get my Negro light together. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, Florida taking it seriously? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm quarantined. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm taking it seriously. You know, I got, I keep my mask. Got, you know, I got neighbors that make me masks. Except I had to have her make me a yellow mask. Oh, there you go. That looks so, good. Because yeah. in a dark mask, let's face it, I'm just gonna like. It feels weird to slap on gloves and put on a mask and feel like I'm robbing a liquor store, you know? <laughs> so. Well, for you, I mean, it's great to see you. Like we were joking right before we went to you that, you know, I, it, well, it's social distancing, we never see our friends, but at the same time, I haven't seen you in a couple of years, so. Yeah, it's <laughs> it feels like, um, so I, I want to ask about Strangers with Candy before we get to some other stuff. Yeah. I mean, that show we were just talking about still continues to be so iconic and you i just watched it not too long ago and it still holds up and it's still one of the funny shows do you see it that way do you see that uh the, why does a show like that continue to have such success 23 years after the fact i never i never watched the show i mean you know i have i have copies of it but i never look at it and it's so funny when it was out i used to watch it and i was just seeing how my performance was but then like, let's say seven years later, I watched it. I started watching everybody else's performances and I was cracking up, you know? So uh, 
I, I, I don't, I, I don't know why it's, it's a, it, it was just, I don't know why it's good. Yeah. And obviously uh, when you go back and watch it, I, think I, asked, I asked Colbert one time, cause I was surprised at the time. I was like, you know, like some of Amy's lines, some of all their lines. I'm like, how do you, <laughs> how do you do it, man? How do you know what to go for? And he was saying like, regards to jokes, he says, it's like, um, when you're writing a joke, it's like going for a, a light. He's like, you know if it's green, it's safe. He's like, you kind of go for it right between it's going from yellow to red, then you got it. <laughs> you <know? laughs> well, so, it's, I, it's amazing that that show was on Comedy Central as well, which yeah. at the time, I mean, it's, it's a pretty racy show, but yeah. uh, you, you know, I was talking to TJ before the show and we were kind of figuring out some of your backdrop, background, TJ. Just the idea of what Greg has done in his life beyond comedy in Chicago. Yeah, and we were going over your background and your backdrop, Greg, and I want to make that very clear. Um, but you, uh, you were a meter reader for some time, yes? Yes. yes. For, for, I, was it gas, electric, water? What were you for? Whom were you reading meters in Chicago? I was reading meters for Commonwealth Edison before mm -hmm. I got fired after twelve years. <laughs> they fired you? What? How do you get fired yeah. from that? Uh, well, you know, I should have gotten fired. Well, no, you know, I should have got suspended. I shouldn't have been fired. Uh, I was working in a neighborhood, and uh, at the time, I went from a meter reader, and I was a meter man. I was installing electric meters. Ooh, nice. And uh, I'm working, like, in, in um, Humble Park, before Humble Park got as nice as it is now. But anyway, and it was, like, August, and... You're installing, you're on electricity, man. You're still, it's like, like a lot of electricity. Anyway, these kids are pouring water down throughout the third floor, you know? <laughs> so I slap these meters in and I leave, you know? <laughs> and uh, well, I slapped them in on a dead fitting. I didn't know there was, the, you know, there's a test supposed to take, you know, and I was like, it, half the time it's run alive. So. Uh, that's why I eventually got fired. And they tried to save my job. And this is, uh, so after a, a year, the union tried to save my job and they offered me a job as a nuclear fireman. So I'm like, what kind of fires am I gonna be putting out? <laughs> you know, uh, like Chernobyl, man, that's no good. Right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so uh, I could have got my gig back, but because um, sometimes, you know, you get your gig back and then you get a year of back pay. And it was so weird. Uh, they had, they came to the, they sent a guy to pick me up in their company car. And I got in and it was filled with a whole bunch of electric meters in the back. And I had worked there all that time. And I never knew that those meters had a scent, smell. Ooh. And once I got in that car, that smell hit my nose and every bad memory about that <laughs> effing company oh, man. came to my man. I was like, you know, I'm going through the motions, but I'm never coming back to this ML. Yeah, ever. I was going to say, I don't know that smell, but you're right. Uh, Greg, I, I heard that while you were putting in meters, you got to know every single part of the city of Chicago. Uh, on the north side. The north on the side. north side. What's your favorite corner or favorite block in the entire city? <laughs> I mean, the city, yeah. I mean, the north side where you used to work uh well you work from we went from north avenue to howard okay from the lake to o'hare so you had like 40 men work that whole that whole section of the city and so like let's say at the beginning of the month you were at from uh north avenue to armitage from the lake to and then the next day you went from the uh, Armitage to what's on uh, Fullerton. So uh, I used to hate like where Steppenwolf is now. Oh, on Halstead? That, yeah. That Those was shows are it atrocious. Like it does now. <laughs> it, it was, that, block, that block has never looked good. It's always no. looked the same. It's a No, no, that area has changed. I mean, there was no, you know, uh, Apple store and all that jazz there back in 1974. That's when you were doing it, 1974? That's when you were doing it? 1974 to 87. That's what, what? I, I worked. And uh, then I started taking uh, improv classes. And that's when I saw my path. I was like, I was like, you know, uh, later for this yeah. jazz. 
But then yeah, Lincoln Park in the seventies was much different than it was today. Yeah, There's no good doubt. Italian ice on Armitage, though. There was always good Italian ice. Oh man, that was great. You know, she was like I used to call her. She was like the the soup Nazi before the soup. Nazi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, right, you know, we're gonna before I let you go. You know, you wrote this great thing about Michael McCarthy. Michael yeah. McCarthy just passed away this last week, and he was um, a really thoughtful and uh, a, a really great guy to to be friends with. And we all knew him, and we all uh, respected him, and were saddened by his passing. You wrote about your time with him in one particular instance where you went to the Grand Canyon when you guys were on Second City <laughs> tour, and I thought maybe you could tell us about it. Well, yeah, it was the, like it was the, like in nineteen uh, was it ninety three. I was like. 36 and Mike was 33 and uh, and uh, he had just finished his work on the main stage and he was going out to California and I had left Second City and he, he you know asked me if I wanted to go and I was like yeah man he's like hey maybe we should stop off the Grand Canyon before we go I'm like yes <laughs> let's do that so we were, we were driving across and and uh, we finally get to the Grand Canyon and uh we, I, I might as well have been looking at a postcard because I'm like, you know, it was so effing grand, I couldn't take it all in. And so uh, Mike says to me, you want to walk to the bottom? And I was like, are you crazy? Do you want to walk to the bottom? I used to be read meters. I, I can walk all day long. And <laughs> I used to tour with Michael before at, you know, the touring company. I never seen Michael do anything physical other than after we do the show, he'd be at the bar and at the time he smoked. He didn't, you know, but so I was like, you know, he, all he did was smoke. I never saw Michael doing anything remotely physical. So he was like, yeah. So I went to the gift shop and I bought music to listen to the Grand Canyon by cassette tape. And uh, and Michael had a red little ghetto blaster, which became a chore. So I popped it in. <laughs> so we're walking down, and I'm telling you, man, if you ever decide to go to the Grand Canyon, Rent the fuck mules, rent the mules, <laughs> donkeys, rent them. Do not walk down. That is like, I don't know, I was like, like I said, 36 at the time. That was the most intense walk coming out that I ever had. I felt my mu muscles in my ass days afterward. Rent the wow. mule. And plus, there were animals. I didn't put this part in it. There was like a mountain goat. And I came across it. He's looking at me like, you go first. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you go ahead. He was like, Hey man, we can do this all day, okay? I ain't got nowhere to go. So I'm scared as a pacifist sucker. So then anyway, we get down to the bottom and it took like three and a half hours to walk to the bottom. And uh, we met this German girl and she says, uh, well, she's pretty and everything. She's like, hey, have you guys seen the Colorado River? I'm like, no, no. She's like, oh, well you, you better, um, you better leave now because once it gets dark, you can't see the trail. You know? And <laughs> oh, so, uh, so, but before that happened, as I was going down, there was a group of German hikers in the canyon. And I got tired of listening to this music to listen to the Grand Canyon by, you know, they had like this National Geographic PBS right. style music. And so I take out my music to listen to the Grand Canyon by and pop in Michael Jackson's Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, you know. And admittedly, a different I should time. have had <laughs> headphones. But like I said, you know, I had never Grand Canyon before. And, and I'm playing, you know, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. That's a jam, man. That is hot. So uh, all of a sudden, these uh, one of the German hikers is like, Hey, black man, black man, black, turn off the music, music, music. And before I get time to say, is, is he talking to me? Michael, whole body shakes and vibrates. Blow me, blow me. <laughs> this is in the Grand Canyon. It, it was so funny because you know how Michael was. He's no, it's not, it doesn't seem like something human beings, yeah. kind, soft, thoughtful man. If everybody was like Michael, it'd be a beautiful. You know, it's like, it's like, Ghosting, you know. I don't think of. I don't think of you. I don't think of you guys as white guys. I just think you're a human being first. And Michael's like a <laughs> thank you, beautiful, thank you very human much, being, you know. Well, you can check it out. Check out all of Greg's story. It's great about the way up and everything as well. Greg Holloman is, uh, uh, the, of course, played Principal Blackman on Strangers with Candy. He's in Florida, sheltering in place, 
our guest oh, today. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Hey, Greg, thanks so much for joining us, man. We talk to greg all day man that's great and yeah and the, the great part about that story, and scuba diver too yeah he's great he's in so many different things so many great shows and uh you can only hope to be like him as uh we continue on this life of comedy uh gold sincere tj shanoff as well michael mccarthy you know it's such a such a sad story because he uh he had done so many different things from writing from snl to sesame street he was a second city guy as you talk to you know a love teacher all of his teacher. students loved him he was a guest on my show at wgn fantastic uh, husband and, step, and yeah. stepfather yeah. wonderful and, uh, lost his battle with cancer but you know he is a uh, tremendous tremendous uh spirit and he'll be remembered uh forever especially in the chicago comedy community so all right uh let's take a break give us one of those reads there goldie and then seth thomas does anybody really know what time it is does anybody really care? Well, it's 420. Sure, it was yesterday, but the whole month is 420. And Grown In cares. GrownIn.com is the information resource for the industry and those looking to learn more. Grown In is a proud sponsor of the Pandemic Talk Show and a terrific place for you to hear the of Illinois' newest essential industry. Don't know a terpene from a cannabinoid or the difference between CBD, THC, CBG, and CBN? Curious about MSO's craft grows and the latest in dispensary news? Be in the know and get in the grow with Grown In. Subscribe today at GrownIn.com. There you go. Nice read, buddy. Nice read. Getting used to this. I love that the dispensaries are considered essential business. Yes. I do too. If Binnie's is going to be indispensable, then my local dispensary has to be too. Period. Uh, all right, our next guest. Uh, this is crazy. I've known Seth Thomas for a long time now. It's a great comedian in Chicago, Second City. Also, uh, one half of the Defiant Thomas Brothers, which is a great sketch comedy group here in Chicago. Uh, he has shown up all over your TV, your local or national morning uh, news, because of a TikTok he did with the flight crew for a Southwest Airlines flight from L.A. to Oakland. Mike, I think we have the video. <laughs> Here's a little bit of the video of Seth teaching the dance, the TikTok dance to the flight attendants. <laughs> Can we play it? And the way you motion, motion in my left, blow the way you move with it. When I rise up, baby, don't shy. Who taught you how to trust it? You a fool. All right, there you go. <laughs> what are you doing? Seth Thomas, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pandemic Talk Show. Seth Thomas. <laughs> I can play every Men Without Hat song, so we're in really good shape. Live internet. What? Well, I, I love Seth. Why we, is he flying? And are. why are they dancing so close together? Where are you at, oh, Mike? Here we go. Here we go. There he is. There's an S. We're getting All right. close. There he is. Getting close. I got to check. Oh. I pushed the button. And then Greg is back. Hi, Greg. <laughs> I pushed. This is proof. I pushed the button. You did? Did you push right. the video button? Proof I that did push live. the video button. Yes. The video button. And we tested this and everything. How are you guys doing? Good, Good buddy. How are you, man? We got an S on the screen. You know, so I can't go with that. How do I? How do I fix that? I, I've been. Um, I've been well. You know, it's. Uh, they got the information wrong. I was actually flying from Oakland. You go. Going on, he's back. All right. Coming. Yeah. I like Here I like go. doing the show live. Seth, for this have, there there he is. There, there he we, is. There we go. Barely see you. Look at there he is. Ah uh, yes. Hi What's guys. Up, buddy? Hey Seth. How are, are you? Are you at an ashram? Where are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm totally like trying to get my you know my whole thing centered. You know, I've been on a plane and like I just had to just like you know. Ugh. Give me back. So they got it wrong. You were going from Oakland to L.A. But what were you doing? Yeah, I was what going from. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, it was it was COVID, and I was like, man, flights are cheap, you know? Like, um, uh, <laughs> I, um, no, I, uh, I, I took a, I left, I left Chicago, you know? I, I moved, uh, I moved here, um, and, 
I uh, took a train to the Bay Area. I got to see America on the Amtrak. I like okay. I was in a car by myself. And then I got there and then I needed to get to LA because it was cheaper that way. So I just bought a flight and I was the only one. And so as soon as the guy told me, you're going to be the only dude on the plane, I'm like, I'm dancing on this plane, y'all. I'm, I'm making it. <laughs> so, uh, so I actually, you know, so I actually went up to them before we got on the plane. I had a mask on everything. I was like, hey, are you the flight crew for this flight? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay, we're making videos. And they just looked at me like I was silly. And then when we got on the flight and I was the only one, and then uh, the woman came over, was like, you're the only one. So I have to give the flight message to you. And I was like, well, I'm going to sit in the exit row, so you have to talk to me longer. <laughs> and so uh, so I sat in the exit row. We had all kind of like laugh and jokes with them. And I was like, hey, let's make this video. And so we did. Uh, the, in the most interesting thing about the, about the video isn't the actual video itself. It was how we got the shot, because there was no one else on the plane. Yeah, right. Um, so we had, to, we had to like run around trying to figure out how to get the shot. But basically what we ended up doing was we took two seatbelt extenders and put them together and then strap them, put one end inside the overhead compartment on one end, pulled it to the other end, put the other one in, tighten the seat belt. And then one of the women had a hair clip. And so we took her hair clip and clipped my phone to the hanging seat belt. <laughs> were you and at all, were you, I, my, I saw and the, the clips the and I saw all the Good Morning America and the Today Show and you're doing interviews left and right. And the first thing that popped in mind was I'm like, what are you doing on a flight? Like what? <laughs> right. <laughs> So were you right. at all like, all right, maybe I won't go on this flight. Were you at least, were you at all concerned you were the only one on it? No, um, quite frankly, um, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where like immediately after a situation, everyone's the best. You know, like when, like when a restaurant gets popped for e, e. coli, the next two weeks, that's the best place to eat because they're the cleanest place on the planet, right? All right. So like right. right now, everyone's freaking out. Man, that Southwest plane smelled like chemicals, man. I, it was so clean. <laughs> It was so clean. As soon as I stepped on the the whatever they was cleaning, it would hit me in the face. I felt cleaner. Like I, it was insane. Also, I, so I, you know, not really. I gotta it know how so, much that it, ticket was. Yeah. Uh, I bought it day of, two hours before it took off. It was eighty nine dollars, <laughs> and I and I was uh, section A. And, 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 and but it was what's crazy is I was a 16, but the other 15 didn't show up. I guess they just decided they wasn't doing it. Did they still do so, the whole routine when you're boarding? Where like uh, first class passengers? Yeah, they have to. Uh, they're, they're yeah. The only ones in there. <laughs> yep, I had all three of them around me. They were just talking to me. It was just so it was hilarious. Yeah, it was. They had to do the whole routine. They had to show me how to do the belt. Show me where the cards were. Uh, exit row. I had to tell her I would get myself off in the case of an emergency. Yeah. Went through the but whole routine. You, were you surprised at, at the idea of this going viral? That, that all these different talk shows are loving it, or you you know the minute you did it, yeah. you're like I can just send this there. Yeah. No, I had I had no idea. Like um, so I I mean I I discovered like TikTok uh, several months ago, and I really enjoy the in app editing, so I don't have to like come out of the thing. So I just make them all the time, and like I found myself on an empty bus or an empty train, I'm making one. So I was like, oh, an empty plane, I'm gonna make one. And then they were so down and they wanted to get down so quick, so much. So we just were like, okay, let's do this thing. And I really thought it was just gonna be like my friends, you know, Facebook, Instagram. Um, what happened was uh, I put it on Instagram. A friend of mine was like, make your profile public so I can share it or whatever. Cause I had, my Instagram was private. And so I, I made it public. And then like five minutes later, Storyful hit me up in my DMs and was like, "Yo, we do viral video stories. We're based, you know, based out of Ireland. We wanna, we wanna license this thing." And I was like, "Okay, cool," because I'm like, "What is this gonna do? End up in like, you know, the reader?" Uh, <laughs> and uh, bam, next thing I know, it's um, it's on Good Morning America. No, Seth, and then we, like, we have. I'm sorry. Go on. Go on. No, go for it. I'm done. No, I was going to say, we, we have a lot of young people watching our show. It's our demographic. Just to kind of clarify, yeah. this viral video means you're a millionaire now instantly, right? That's how viral videos work? Y yeah, yeah, instantly, instantly. And also, um, I get all the guac I want, <laughs> which, is, which is probably the most important uh, asset of being famous. Right. You know, like not paying for guac anymore. It's just oh, it's great. It's Avocados great. are pricey. They are. Yeah. So you're yeah, in LA now. Yeah, so what's what's the reason for the move to LA? Oh, um, because um, you know, whatever. 
whatever, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, it's you know, Chicago's I, lost, buddy. I yeah. mean, that's, it, I didn't even know, I thought you were here, but uh, it's great you're in LA. Yeah, 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 no, I thought I, I, you know, it was it was one of those kind of things where like, you know, you're chugging, you know, you're, you're chugging along cause you're chugging along and like, you're just doing the thing and you're just doing what you gotta do. And you just, you got responsibilities and people worry and you're like, there's no real reason to, to break. There's no real reason to step aside and be like, yo, whatever, whatever. But then COVID hit, the store shut down, nobody's working. And I'm like, when this is over, I'm not going back to retail in the basement, man. Like, nah, you know what I mean? Like, I, it, you know, like I just decided like I had two options. Like I was either gonna live or die and I didn't wanna do either there anymore. Like I wanted to come home. I'm originally from California and I just wanted to come home. And so like, I took this opportunity to do a hard reset and I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do. You know, I'm, 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 I'm here, I went viral. I'm gonna try to strike while the iron's hot. I'm gonna yeah, create man. a little thing for me to do, like whatever. Like, you know, we've got, we've been doing this for so long, man. And long time, every yeah. single one of you, every single one of you had a job once. And every single one of you hit the same spot I hit and you walked away and was like, man, I ain't doing this no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> and now you're paying for your life from the keys or from your microphone or from what you're doing and you got, right? You, yeah, you know what I, I mean? Know. Yeah, we, and yeah. so it happened to me, man. And I get to join the ranks a little bit later than everybody else, but that's what's happening, you know? Good for you. So well, I'm really excited. Seth, that's great, man. It's great to, to that you are, it's Chicago's loss, it's LA's gain. And uh, Seth Thomas, <laughs> one half of Defiant Thomas Brothers, and of course the star of this viral video and a great comedian. Seth, great to see you, man. Love Thanks you, for buddy. Coming. Hey, man, good. Great. Great. great to see you guys. Thank you for having there me. You go. You're the best. All right, this, that's the Pandemic Talk Show for today, Tuesday, April 21st. We're back tomorrow. It was so fun. We're going to do this Tuesday through Thursday. But tomorrow, which is great, Eric Williams from the Silver Room is going to join us. The Silver Room shut down. And they also just canceled the Silver Room Block Party, which is one of the best street fests in Chicago. Uh, and also Molly Green from La Familia Greeting Card is going to join us because the Renegade Craft Fair as we all know, one of the best craft fairs in Chicago is going virtual this weekend because they're, they're going to try to save the and, and get independent DIY craft, uh, you know, small business owners some love virtually as opposed to the craft fair. So that is coming up as well tomorrow on the pandemic. I'm Justin Kaufman, TJ Schmidt, and uh, next up will be the uh, seven year old kid who's wrapping gifts. <laughs> like and subscribe. See ya. Back to you. <laughs>